songs of love But not for me A lucky stars above But not for me With love to rule the way I found more skies of gray Than any Russian play Could guarantee Lord knows I was a fool to fall and get that way. Each of us singers likes to think that we're unique, that the way we sing is truly individual. In some ways, that is true. I'm not like any other singer. The experiences that shape me that made me sing the way I do are mine alone. But at the same time, all of us share a common jazz heritage. Each of us owes a debt to all the singers that have preceded us, even those we never heard. We're all a product of the past. In this show, we're going to look at four jazz vocalists singing today, each different from one another, yet connected by their common roots in jazz history. Dakota Staten is a powerful singer, a jazz stylist who, with emotion and drama, reaches out to her audience. He's right behind the flower every evening. He stomps the milk and how it ever Jean Lee is almost the opposite. She might be termed an avant-garde artist pursuing a form of improvisation that uses not just the voice, but music, dance, and art as well in her performance. Sheila Jordan is a singer with a wonderful voice whose singing style ranges from beautiful ballads to instrumental vocal lines. Jay Clayton is devoted to developing her voice as an instrument. She tries to achieve the same effects with the voice that a horn player does with the horn. As different as these singers are, they all have their roots in the past, conscious or not. There has always been someone for each of them that has either paved the way for them or served as an influence. This is how the jazz tradition is kept alive. Whatever else a jazz singer does, she communicates. Sometimes it's to thousands of people in a concert hall, sometimes to a handful in a small club or a loft. But each of us has our audience and different ways to reach it. Dakota Staten, she does it with her dramatic style. She takes all her vocal talents and puts them in the service of the words of the song. In a love song, she'll almost act out the parts, not just with vocal emphasis, but with hand and facial gestures as well. She gets into a song. What do you see in her? She has two arms to hold you tight, and so do I. Two lips to kiss you day and night, and so do I. What do you see in her that you didn't see in me? Why 
why did you say goodbye? Is she so wonderful that she could make us part? And does she whisper tender words that touch your heart? The Kona style is original. But her way of saying didn't develop out of nowhere. She drew from other singers as she is the first dimension. Oh, well, when I was young, I listened to Dinah Washington. She was my favorite because I liked her type of uh, nightclub approach and act. And that's more or less my era. And my, that's, I style myself uh, as far as uh, show business is concerned. Uh, to have a type of entertaining act like she had. And now it's star time at the Apollo Theater. And what could be finer than my diner? Here she is, the queen of the blues, Miss Donna Washington. Donna Washington began her career as a jazz singer with Lionel Hampton's band. You can see in her style the same dramatic qualities that Dakota brings to her singing. Another reason, another reason for making me a lot of shoes, a lot of life. A room full of nervous he answers what? It's really thrilling, this cat's a willing to make a room big. Well, take care a little love nest down where the roses cling. Then picture the same sweet love nest. See what one year can bring. He's washing dishes and dirty clothes. He's so ambitious, he even sold. So don't forget, folks, that's what you get, folks, for making you move Another year, or maybe less. What's this I hear? Well, can you get? He feels neglected, and he's suspected of making woo -tay. He sits alone most every night. He doesn't phone her, he doesn't write. He says he's busy, and she says, is he? Uh-uh, he's making whoopee. Well, he doesn't make much money, only 5,000 per. There's some old judge who she calls honey, says he's got to pay six to her. He says, now, judge, suppose I fail. The judge says, ha, 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 into jail. You better keep her, I think it's cheaper than making whoopee girls. Well, it's a whole lot cheaper than making whoopee. As we come back to Dakota, it's easy to see how Dinah Washington, a singer from the past, still lives in the style of this singer today. I smile and say hello I can't help just wondering whether you see inside the tears I hide what do you see in her how did she get into the arms where I belong? What is she doing right that I was doing wrong? What do you see in her that you didn't see? What do you see in her that you didn't see in me? Dakota reaches for a wide audience. Jean Lee is a singer whose audience is smaller, but intensely devoted as she pursues a personal vision of jazz improvisation involving not just music, but words, movement, theater, and dance. 
Jean's background includes training in composition, literature, drama, and dance. And she brings all these elements to bear in a performance. When she improvises, it is not just over the chords of a tune like a scat vocalist, rather she goes beyond the music into words, images, and movement. It is risky, but at its best, it can create magic. When will thou blow? Here, in a performing loft, she the musicians and a dancer create a series of musical, vocal, and movement improvisations on a blues whose lyrics come from a 15th century poem. version of the blues, a form that is as old as jazz, a form which has grown rich over the years from all the singers and instrumentalists who have contributed their own personal interpretations to it. Like a very young Lena Horne, here singing the blues with Teddy Wilson and his orchestra in 1941. between the blues of Lena Horne and the way Jean sings them. One is traditional, the other is more experimental. But one form grows out of the other, and both are part of jazz. And I, in my bed. Our next vocalist, Sheila Jordan, draws as much inspiration from instrumentalists as she does from singers. One of her most important influences was the great saxophonist Charlie Parker. In the performance we're about to see, she takes an original musical line written by Charlie Parker and adds her own words explaining how important his influence was in her own life. It is an outstanding tribute linking instrumental melody words and vocal performance. 
Jazz singers call this form of singing an instrumental line with newly fitted words, vocalese. At times I wonder where my life would be If I'd never heard the music of Bird Back when I was just a kid I listened to each precious note Floating out of his horn so many years ago What a treat he used to be for me to hear him The thrill of being near him I lived for every song that he played from his heart Bird brought a special world to me And by leading the way I've learned to live my life from the dues that he paid He turned me on to sounds I never heard before By listening to those wonderful songs he put into every face Somehow I find it rather strange Knowing that there are us who really love him While so many aren't even aware of his name I feel blessed that I grew up During all of those wonderful years Surrounded by the joy that he gave there's nothing in life that will ever have the meaning for me I can give me the thrill Like hearing Charlie Parker <laughs> One of the original female vocalese singers was British-born Annie Ross Who, in 1952, took a saxophone solo by Waddell Gray set some unusual lyrics to it, and released it on a record as a tune called Twisted. It became an immediate success. It has been re-recorded by various singers since then, one of the most recent being Joni Mitchell. A few years later, Annie Ross joined Dave Lambert and John Hendricks. And as Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross became famous in the late 50s, for their version of Count Basie Big Band Arrangements, which they rescored for their voices. We're about to see a television show made in 1959 in which Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross do the famous Basie tune every day, originally done by vocalist Joe Williams and the whole band. In this arrangement, they use a combination of scat singing and lyrics and manage, with only a rhythm section behind them, to recreate the rich sound of the original recording. Especially watch Annie with her great vocal flexibility and enormous range sing the part of various instruments in the band. Most dramatically, the high lead trumpet part. Every day, oh, well, uh, 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 every day I have the blues. What are you gonna get but blue? Which did I get out of baby? Can I do? See me worried, baby. I better do. Cause it's you I hate to lose. What about settling? How you gonna keep from that? No, Bonnie loves me. No. You know Every day I hear I have 
I hear him singing now. I have to do. It's clear. His blues are doing now. I have to do. There is a direct link between Annie Ross singing with Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross to Sheila Jordan. Both are saying, in a way, that the standard material for vocalists, ballads, and popular songs are not enough, that there is a whole body of work created by jazz composers, arrangers, and especially improvising instrumentalists that is powerful, challenging, and important that needs and deserves to be part of a vocalist repertoire. <laughs> Jay Clayton also is concerned with instrumentalists as a source for her singing. In fact, she wants to use her voice to be an instrumentalist. When she sings with a group, it is not really as a singer, it is as another horn player, blending her voice with the other instruments, phrasing the melody as they do, improvising as they do. Listen to the way Jay and Jane Ira Bloom, the saxophonist, play off each other, exchanging ideas and phrases, building an intensity of communication in the best tradition of jazz. <laughs> Vocalizing as a horn player is an extension of scat singing, using syllables instead of words to create an instrumental sound with the voice, freeing the vocalist from the standard singer's role. There is a whole tradition of wonderful scat singers, but one who stands out because she also uses her voice as an instrumentalist sitting in with a band is Anita O'Day. We're going to see Anita in 1958 singing as if she's the featured saxophone with the Les Brown Band. Two, three, four. The tune is the jazz classic Four Brothers, written for the four-man saxophone section of the Woody Herman Band by saxophonist Jimmy Jufri. Here, You'll see Anita take the part of one of the saxophones. In fact, you can see one of the saxophones not playing as Anita sings his part. <laughs> Do 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 
An inspired performance for a singer or a saxophonist. One that undoubtedly opened the way for singers such as Jay Clayton to develop their own instrumental approach to singing. I've been glad to look with you at some of the many women who, through their art and their talent, have contributed to the development of jazz singing. We've covered a range of contemporary vocal styles, and with this fine collection of jazz films, have been able to travel in time and review some important singers in the history of jazz. What I'm left with, looking at these different singers, is something I've also learned from my own experience. There are many reasons to sing jazz. The bright lights and sound of applause, the special energy from your audience and the warmth of shared communication with other musicians. For some, there's the concert tours, the records, the recognition. But the real reason we sing jazz is simple. <laughs> There's no other feeling in the world quite like it. Nothing gives that special joy. Nothing takes its place. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. A lucky, lucky stars above, but not for me. With love to rule the way, I found more skies of gray than any Russian play could guarantee I was a fool to fall and get that way high oh alas and also lack a day Although I can't dismiss the memory of